All right, what's up? Um, today we're gonna be taking a look at the iPod third generation. I uh, I just restored this. It's been sitting in a drawer for about seven years. Uh, so I took it out, I did some research, found what I needed to uh, buy to make it work again, and needless to say, it works. Uh, and I'll be showing you that in a little bit. But um, little uh, little brief summary. Uh, this was uh, released in 2003. Um, Apple released this in 2003. It was the first uh, real major overhaul of uh, the iPod and basically one of the last until the iPod Touch. Um, it featured four buttons. Uh, they were all touch sensitive. Uh, a touch sensitive wheel and a touch sensitive middle button. So everything here you see is touch sensitive. Technically this is the first iPod Touch if you want to you know, say that. Um, at the top you have your hold button uh, your uh, headphone jack, uh, remote plug, and you have uh, your 30 pin connector. Okay, uh, this was a thin model. Other models, depending on the hard drive size, came in a, a thicker, uh, thicker model. Uh, 40 gigs were the thickest, and then I think 10 and 15 were uh, were thin models. Uh, so this is a thin model from the manufacturer. It's uh, it's a 15 gig. All right, so it was originally bought as a 15 gig. Um, so yeah, so um, with the proper research, uh, you know, to search on the internet, um, that's what I did. I was able to find everything I needed, and there was a lot of help out there. There was a lot of good websites that I went to, how to open the device, what to buy for it, um, troubleshooting, all types of stuff. So uh, with, with the proper research and the use of the internet, you can find what you need here. Um, a couple of years ago, I was taking this thing to computer repair shops, and they were saying it's not worth uh, their time and not worth my money. And I was like, well, all right. So it just sat in a drawer, and then I stumbled upon it, and I did my research on the Internet and found everything I needed. Um, it cost me total probably about 60 bucks total for everything I need. I'm going to show you what you're going to need to buy. Um, so um, this thing didn't go on at all. There was nothing going on with the screen nothing at all. I was uh, plugging it in USB into the computer, into the wall, nothing. Um, I found out that you need Firewire so first thing you need to do is you need to buy a Firewire cable. Okay, uh, This device charges via Firewire. It does not charge through USB. It only syncs through USB. So you need to buy a Firewire cable with a wall outlet. Um, I bought this on Amazon it was uh, probably like, I think it was like 6 or $7 with shipping. So uh, not bad. I bought it from a seller. Uh, you know, they said it was in really good condition, which it is. Okay, there's your Firewire. Okay, uh, and it came with the cord too. Um, the cord is basically brand new. All right. Um, once again, right from Apple. All right, Firewire. And there you have it. Okay, so you need to use, uh, you need to buy this. All right, so that's the first thing you need to buy because it's very important to have uh, if you want to charge it. And actually, you're gonna need that to uh, to complete the restoration, which I'll tell you later. Uh, the next thing you're gonna buy is a battery. All right, um, just search iPod third generation battery. And you'll find a bunch of stuff. I did that in Amazon. I found this. Um, this is the old battery. It's an 800 milliamp battery. Um, it was good for about 8 or 10 hours, I believe. Um, and I was able to buy this from Amazon, and it was actually a 13 milliamp battery. So I should get a little bit uh, extra battery life. Um, this was, um, yeah, this was like 7 bucks total. Comes with a screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver. Um, so, yeah. Um, so you're going to need a battery. And then lastly, right, you're going to need a hard drive. And, you know, depending on, you know, what you want, I mean, obviously you're going to want more storage, so more the better. Uh, this is the old 15 gig hard drive. Uh, Toshiba makes all the hard drives. All right, it's a Toshiba Mini. It's a 1.8 inch hard drive. Um, so, yeah, I would put in, um, you know, iPod hard drive. I searched that and I found all these. Uh, there's actually a good blog on the internet. It tells you all the models and what they're compatible with. 
So I was able to find the one that I needed. I found a 40 gig. It was a thin hard drive that fit the thin iPod. Okay. Uh, back in the day, this tells you how long technology has come along. Um, you know, 20 and 40 gig hard drives came in. Uh, they're called uh, dual platter hard drives. So for a 40 gig, you would have two discs, two 20 gig discs spinning in this case. Okay, this is a, so as technology progressed, they were able to fit 40 gigs onto one disc, and they made it thinner. So I was able to get a 40 gig hard drive so now my 15 gig iPod is now a 40 gig iPod um, so yeah so and then you're gonna need to buy a prying tool um, I didn't buy a prying tool I just used the flathead screwdriver um, I made that little mark there um, yeah so I made that little hole there uh, It kinda ticked me off a little bit but I mean it's not it's not very visible I mean you can kinda tell but I mean, it's fine. But, um, cosmetically, I mean, it's, it's fine. But, uh, anyway, uh, I use the flathead screwdriver to pry it open. Once you get into the device, be very careful, all right? The white is going to pull off from the, uh, from the chrome, and then there's a, a bunch of ribbons inside, and they're pretty tight. There's not much slack, so when you open it, be very careful. Um, you're going to have to disconnect all the ribbons, um, the headphone ribbon, is the only one disconnect it very gently uh, pull by the uh, the connector okay uh, and then once you get the headphone uh, pin and connector out you will have two separate sides you'll have this side free and then this side free and then you'll uh, you'll have access to the hard drive and the battery um, when you open it up okay the battery is going to be like that okay and it's going to be on the silver side on the chrome side, so the battery's gonna be like that, plugged in to the to the uh, logic board, and then the hard drive sits on top. Okay, so be very careful. What you're gonna do is uh, the hard drive is covered in rubber to absor to absorb shock. So what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to pull this off as straight as possible without like bending it on an angle. You don't want to bend any of the pins. Okay, so once you pull that out, okay the battery rests in like a like a little indent, indentated slot okay and um, you're gonna have to pull from this connector pull it out and then you're gonna pull the battery out alright um, the, the wire runs underneath the logic board so there's gonna be like a piece like that alright it's gonna be under it and it's gonna be plugged into like the top of my pinky over here okay so you're gonna have to pull that out on the side and then you'll be fine um, so then once you get everything back in, um, hopefully, you know, just the hard drive and a, uh, a battery was the, was the issue. Um, it could be a, uh, a logic board issue. Luckily, mine wasn't a logic board issue. The hard drive and the uh, battery, you know, made it work. So once you, uh, once you get everything in there, you close up your iPod, um, and you're ready to go. Um, once you, uh, close it up and you hit the power button or you hit the, uh, the play button, you're going to see an Apple logo. What you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to hit the, fo the back and forward button at the same time. As soon as you see that logo, you're going to want to do that. Uh, then you'll be able to put the, uh, the device in disk mode, and then you can hook it up to the computer. Um, if you don't hit the back and the forward button at the same time, you're going to keep getting an Apple logo show up, and then it's going to make a click noise, and it's going to reset. Apple logo, click. Apple logo click, Apple logo click. Okay, um, so make sure you hit the uh, the back and the forward buttons together. Put it in disk mode, and then connect it to your computer using a USB uh, cord. All right. Uh, once you're connected to the computer with the USB, you're going to see a little Windows dialog box come up, and that dialog box is going to say Windows has recognized an unformat unformatted a uh, portable disk or a portable storage device uh, would you like to format now hit yes it'll format the, uh, the iPod and then you could go ahead and open iTunes and iTunes will recognize that you have an iPod that is not uh, that has nothing on it it needs to be restored um, go through all the dialog boxes click yes and next and then iTunes will be able to uh, 
download the uh, software and all the firmware onto the device and then you'll be ready to go. Um, once iTunes is done downloading all the software onto the iPod, uh, you're going to get another dialog box through iTunes. It's going to say, um, please connect your device to an external power source to complete the restoration process. All right, And that's where this Firewire adapter comes in pl into play. Um, it's the only way you could charge it, and it's the only power. Out, uh, it's the only external power source. Excuse me. Uh, so that's why you need this. If you don't have this, you cannot complete the restoration, and then this device here is useless. So you need to buy this. All right. Once um, once that's done, all right. Once you plug it in, it's going to charge your device fully, and then you will be able to use it. Um, so once you uh, once you're all done and it's fully charged. Okay, you can unplug it from the FireWire wall uh, charger. You could hit the play button, all right, and you'll be ready to go. Um, so this is it. This it works. Uh, this was always my favorite model. Uh, all these touch sensitive buttons were really cool back in the day. I loved it. Uh, actually, my friend gave this to me. He was gonna throw it out. And I said, "Yo, I might be able to fix that one day." Seven years later, it's fixed. Um, so yeah, I always thought this was a cool one. It was all touch sensitive, pretty pretty gnarly. Um, so let's um, let's check it out. Um, like I said, it was a 15 gig model from Apple when it was uh, when it was uh, manufactured, um, and I was able to put a 40 gig in, uh, hard drive in there. So let's take a look at that. All right, about. All right, there's no songs on it, and I'll get to that in one second. All right, capacity 37.2 gigs. Okay, format Windows. All right. Uh, the reason why there's no songs, <laughs> um, I need to buy another cord. Um, since this has a little, you know, mini physical hard drive that spins, all right, when you sync it, the the hard drive spins continuously and drains the battery. Um, you could only sync about 400 songs per session, and have to recharge it, and then sync it again with another 400. Uh, songs recharge it, and you got to keep doing that over and over again because the charge doesn't last long. Um, if uh, if this uh, device or if this iPod runs out of a charge, all right, if the battery gets drained during the uh, the writing process of the songs, um, you're gonna run into an issue. It might freeze on you and all that stuff. So uh, you you need to buy what is known as a Y cable. It's a 30 pin Y cable. So what you get is you get your 30-pin connector, which you see here, okay? And this is the old-school one. It's got, like, the little uh, buttons on the side to release. All right, so you're going to get uh, a 30-pin Y cable. I got, an, I got this on Amazon as well. It was 12 bucks with shipping. Um, and the, the seller says it's uh, Apple-made. Apple it's not from a third party. So that's always, always good. Um, so you're going to get the 30-pin connector, and then it's going to split. And it's going to split into the FireWire and the USB. So you can sync and charge at the same time. So what you would do is you would plug the 30-pin into the iPod, put this into the wall charger, and then put the USB cord into your computer, and you can sync and charge all at once. Um, so yeah, so that's coming in the mail. Um, and I should be getting it any day now. Um, so that's what you're going to have to do. Um, all in all, I mean, this total process here, um, you know, it cost me, I'd say, 65 bucks. And that's, you know, the hard drive, the battery, the wall charger, and the, uh, the Y cable. So I got all that stuff for $65. I remember when I was first pricing this stuff out, like, four or five years ago, um, you know, the hard drives were still, like, $100 for like a 40 gig so um, price has gone down tremendously and with the right you know research and uh, proper searching on the internet I was able to find everything I needed for a good price um, I will include uh, in the description of this video um, you know links for how to open the iPod um, what hard drives to buy and um, where you could buy uh, the products as well for, for a good price alright so I hope you liked the video um, if you have any comments or questions, just, you know, put them down there, uh, in the comments section. 
Uh, one last thing before I go, uh, this device does not, uh, it does not sync to uh, my uh, speaker. Um, I have this um, Altec Lansing boombox, okay, and it does not sync to it. Um, I have to use an auxiliary cord to do that. Uh, it's kind of uh, it's kind of disheartening. I really wanted it to sync and charge, but it does not do that. Uh, so if anybody has any uh, information on, you know, why is that happening? I don't know. Maybe the 30-pin connector is is damaged. I really don't know. But it does not sync to uh, to that device up there. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, comments, questions, concerns, uh, please uh, please comment below. And uh, if you have an answer to the question I just posed uh, at the end about the speaker dock and uh, the syncing issue, uh, please let me know. All right, have a great day.